From east to west, he's got the spies. When things are jokes and lots of fars, he's got no talent and his heart is lame. Everybody knows his hands. That's me. Presented by Squarespace. Hey boys and girls, we're here in Montreal, land of time-tested knuckle pucks and sugary maple syrup. And gosh darn it, it sure is a funny place. Everybody's all wee wee this and wee wee that. I mean, it's within a day's drive of NYC, yet you feel like you're in another world. But damn, even with the language barrier, the city is hella dope. They got super cute French Quebec girls with great accents and motherfucking poutine. That equally delicious and disgusting dish of fries, gravy, cheese, and instant regret. Montreal is also one of a number of growing cities worldwide that have hopped on the mural circuit bandwagon. Bringing together a huge selection of artists from around the world, Montreal's Mural Fest is now in its second year, and I happen to be in town for it. Alright, truth be told, Mural Fest and other similar large scale mural celebrations are a bit weird to me. I'm goddamn torn. On the surface, it's great. It's bringing together a bunch of talent from around the globe, giving them pain, and creating a crisp, clean, and most importantly, legal environment for artists to work in. But if you dig a bit deeper, it can be a bit unsettling. It's the commercialization of an art form. It's having city governments praise bright and beautiful multi-storied street art, all the while neglecting and punishing those artists who operate outside their clean and sanctioned walls. I'm torn because murals and street art and graffiti is traditionally illegal. But now here we are in the 2000 teens and municipalities are celebrating an art form that is rooted in the FTW mentality. You see that froth? You gotta get that fucking froth. Omen's been doing graffiti in Montreal for about 17 years. Through ups and downs, he's been a mainstay in the city's long storied aerosol scene. We brought the focus to the walls, right? Graffiti artists did. They brought the focus for people to look at walls and not at fucking billboards. Omen, along with a handful of other prolific Montreal graffiti writers, kind of blazed the way for the city's widespread acceptance of murals. Starting out with letters, his now recognizable black and white faces and figures are everywhere in Montreal. Mostly done sans permission, his stark work straddles the fine fence between traditional graffiti and flashy street art. I'm not even going to deny the fact that the world's grown up around it. You know, like everything, like if I would have stayed the same, I'd be a dinosaur now. And it, but it's changed, you know what I mean? Because uh, you can't just say graffiti and think you're going to get uh, anywhere. It's true. Graffiti has a buttload of negative connotations. But its recent rise in popularity, thanks largely in part to social media, has given birth to a more clean-cut and marketable offspring. Think of it, like before, like say 10 years ago, if you wanted to find out about graph, you had to go to the graph shop. You had to go look at the graph magazines and talk to the graph writers about what paint is out, you know? You don't go online and order a can off of a, you know what I mean? And then order some books and a video. Because it was a secret society, man, let's be honest. No one knew about it, no one knew how to get in touch with us. If you were not a writer, we saw you a mile away. You know, there was no way in. Now it's just like, I'm a writer, I'm a street artist, oh. No offense, right, Elman? He's talking about me, BT Dubs. I was created by the internet and I freaking thrive on Instagram, but it's 2014, so I dig in my pockets and find no fucks to give. Because in the last five years, street art has become more popular than ever. Montreal is no different. First up is Sticky Peaches. He's one of the more well-known street artists in the city. He's also one of their first. Started a while back and it just grew from there, you know? I mean, now it's city's covered. We touch a little bit on everything, whether it's politics, religion, spoofs, whatever it might be, you know, everybody has their own shtick, their own gimmick. So I guess, you know, it's, it's culturally, it's, it's very diverse, the city. Thanks to the internet, the two of us have been pals for a while now. His art loosely hangs between light and heavy hearted, like a stern man trying to tell a silly joke from his childhood. Beneath the serious delivery, there's playful nostalgia. My stuff is, is, is pop culture related. Yeah, it's, it's very easy, it's easy on the eyes. It's not something that, I don't like to make political statements, I don't like to make any religious statements. Um, I just do this stuff for the pure pleasure of being able to spread it out there. He's in good company too. Sticky, alongside pseudo counterpart What Is Adam, also known as Wea, have seen their popularity rise with Montreal's more recent acceptance of urban art. We just got some fairly iconic images under his belt too, most notably being his pure maple scissor can. But I try to draw on inspirations um, that are found heavily like in, in Canadian culture and just give it like a twist. Uh, it's, it's all like kind of quirky, fun 
stuff that just gets people sort of, you know, I guess feeling the, the nostalgia of Canada too, yeah. you know. Sticky Peaches and Wea started hitting the streets around the same time, about five years ago. They continue to this day. The idea is not to go with a crowd. Um, and also it's like, he and I have very different styles and we have different tastes and, and spots and stuff. So he'll see things for his, for his work that works really well for him and I'll see something completely different across the street. So that works well because we help each other out with looking out and, and you know, choosing different spots and getting our work out there. For some reason, street artists tend to do large wheat pace in Montreal. Sticky and Wea both say it has to do with their alleyways. The city has a lot of them, and they tend to exist on small, one-way streets. The police presence isn't like other cities either. It's not as strong as, say, comparable places like Toronto and the like. So despite the horribly cold winters that'll freeze a moose's nuts right off, conditions in Montreal are pure candy for anyone looking to bomb the city. And that brings us to Kashink. She's not from Montreal, and she's not Canadian. She's a French street artist who was flown in by Muralfest to paint her largest mural to date. It's a behemoth wall. Centrally located on St. Laurent, in many ways it's the focal point of the festival. Large, bright and colorful, it's exactly what I would expect from the mural circuit. I get uh, like invited to a lot of festivals, like in uh, last year I was in eight different countries. And she's hard working. Like many of the artists involved, Kashin spent years putting in street work, both legal and not. I get to meet a lot of uh, other artists who wish they would be invited to this kind of uh, festivals too. I'm very lucky that I am one of them today, but uh, to be honest, I carried all my stuff around to paint some walls everywhere for years without getting any money, you know, or without getting anyone helping me. What I like best about Kashink, aside from her aw shucks French demeanor and eye-popping work, is that in addition to the sanctioned work she consistently gets, she makes it a point to regularly revisit her art's purest form. Once you get invited to a lot of festivals, it's, everything is organized for you. You get there, you have all the paints in the hotel, everything, like all the accommodations and everything is organized for you. So it's like, it's great to be like uh, spoiled like that. Yeah. But uh, also, I, I really like the idea of like doing it uh, just like I used to before, you know, like keep on doing that because yeah. it's important for me also to have that feeling of painting like illegally. Mm -hmm. It feels good. Which was the case earlier in the week. She met up with our pal Omen and did a quick 20 minute illegal piece in broad daylight. It wasn't planned, you know, like, <laughs> like any illegal thing. I mean, I, was, I just happened to be there when uh, Omen was like, oh, let's paint this gate. I had been watching this gate for a little while and he was like, hmm, I want to paint it. I'm like, okay, let's go, let's do it. But that's my biggest grumble about these mural festivals. It glorifies and raises up the super talent. The kids that can paint multi-storied works to perfection. But what about all the illegal tags and street pieces that are pasted up and sprayed on? Where's their recognition? You have to crawl before you can walk, you know. Explaining why I'm probably just being an ignorant NYC asshole is Emily from Station 16. Station 16 is a dope print shop and gallery. Despite producing a few prints of my own, they generally have great taste and artistic talent, both Canadian and otherwise. And they've also been a huge partner of Mule Fest since its beginning. These walls are what helps me um, educate my clients or, or even educate the people from Montreal because you say, this is amazing. Now how come when it's done on an, in an illegal context, it's not amazing? It's the same artist, it's the, the same imagery. Um, and then people start thinking about that. And as long as you've got a dialogue that's going, I think that's, that's when you're creating magic. Literally, you sometimes have to paint the picture for the public that, you know, not all of this is, is vandalism. Some of it has like really creative purpose and you know that we're risking our necks out there to do something that's that gets people like engaged and, and like into it. Things evolve, things change, you know, Ch times change and, and there's opportunities for, for everybody to to do stuff, you know, to do things and to show their art and to show their their talents or, or you know how far their reach can go. But I guess it's all about elevating the art form, right? Sure, these city-backed mural festivals reek of corporate sponsorship, colorful banners, and street art tour maps. They're polished and neat and full of fancy parties and big egos. On the surface, it's the big city patting painters on the back for doing huge ass walls for the grinning and mostly ignorant residents. Don't know what street art is? Well, this is what street art is, and the public eats that shit up. But Montreal is inviting local artists, and not just the fancy ones who tend to ride the mural circuit. They're incorporating wheat paste kids and graffiti artists that participate. And even if you're not invited, look at Wea. He puts his shit up regardless. 
And then you have artists like Ashink, who knows her roots and will be damned if she forgets. What's not to love? Maybe I'm just bent out of shape because I don't have the skills to pay the bills or paint huge walls, but that's just knucking futz. I learned my lesson, I was wrong. But Montreal was super fun, and Mural Fest was hella fun too. I ate a lot of good food and shared drinks with some old friends and many new. We saw some epic rollers, and the girls were super friendly. I didn't realize saying hello with two kisses was customary. I just thought they were into me. Quick side note, don't do it to guys. So bonjour, mi amigos, or is it bonsoir? Ah, uh, who the hell cares? I'm goddamn international now, bitches. Suck it, America. Just kidding. Love you, Obama. Peace.